Somebody asked, how do you stop riding the clutch? Now, there are different ways of riding the clutch. One of them is by having your foot over the clutch and pressing it down as you're driving, especially if you're pressing it down too much. Having your foot just resting on it is not really riding it, but if you're pressing it down as you're driving along, that is riding the clutch. And a simple way to avoid that is when you're driving, is to have your foot on the side. Rather than having your foot here, is to have your foot on the side. And that way you won't ride the clutch. Another way you can ride the clutch is, let's say you've changed gears. So like now I'm gonna change into second. And if I press the gas down too early, that's also riding the clutch because the clutch was still down as I was pressing the gas and it was making a lot of noise, a lot of revs, but nothing was really happening in terms of movement. That's another way of riding the clutch. You can avoid that by making sure that when you change the gear, you lift the clutch all the way up first before pressing the gas. That way, you're not riding the clutch when you change gears. So somebody asked, why didn't I thank that driver that stopped for me? Well, first of all, I did thank the driver by using my hand just like this. So there are lots of different ways people say thanks to other drivers. Some people put their hand up just like this. Some people put just a finger like that. Other people go all out and be like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Do, doing all that kind of stuff. And others will just do a quick little head nod. As long as you do it safely and as long as you communicate what you're doing. So let's see what this driver does. So he's opted for the left hand raise. When you become a driver, don't wait there expecting people to say thank you to you. If they don't say thank you to you, just move on with your day. There are some people that get really upset when they don't get a thanks from other drivers. It's not a big deal, just keep moving. Somebody asked, why would you go into first gear as you approach the traffic light? First of all, when I change it like this, I'm ready to move straight away. And when the light changes to green, I can move without worrying about having to go into gear. I'm already in the gear that I want to be in. The other reason is that a lot of learners forget to gear down into first gear. So when they stop the car, they will just stop the car there and leave in second, and then they wait for the light to change to green. But then when it changes to green, they'll try to move off in second. But when a learner gets used to stopping and then changing gear as well as, it, when, as they're doing that. So as they're stopping, they go into first gear. If they get used to doing that all the time, they're less likely to forget to change into first. Therefore, when they move off again, they're not gonna stall because they're in the wrong gear. They're already in the gear they need to be in, which is first. Another reason is learners take a long time to go from neutral to first. So let's say I'm, I'm the first person at the traffic lights and I'm a learner. So let's say the lights change to green now. This is how long an average a learner will take. So they'll put the clutch down, go into gear, handbrake down, check, and then move off. If I was the first person, by now, people would have started beeping because I was taking too long. So to avoid all that, it's better just to stay in the first gear as you're, as you're at the lights. So here, I'm just gonna wait here because there's not much space for me inside the junction. I would only wait in the junction if there was space to go beyond the crossing. So you see the dotted lines there where the moped is now. If I can't go past that when I'm waiting at these traffic lights, I would wait behind the white line just like I did now. Another reason why I teach learners to go into first gear at the at a red traffic light before it goes green is because a lot of learners will take a long time to go from neutral to gear one and then move off. It takes too long for them to do it. And by the time they, they've done it, people will start beeping because they're taking too long. I'll show you what I mean. So this is how long an average learner will take to get into gear one and move off once it goes to green. So it's gone to green, they put the clutch down, go into gear, get the biting point, but you see by then, two cars have already gone by on that other lane there. That's why it's uh, not a good idea to have it in neutral uh, at the traffic lights. It's better to have it in gear, just like now I'm gonna keep it in gear so that when I get a gap like now, I can check my mirror and move again. If I was in neutral there, that was gonna to take too long to do that, especially if you're a learner. Stay in gear one, ready to move. It's much easier, much safer, and they're less likely to fail that way. Somebody asked, how do you master clutch control? And now the best thing for clutch control for me and my learners is to take them somewhere like this, somewhere that's really busy with slow moving traffic. When there's slow moving traffic, you have no choice but to learn how to use the clutch properly. Because if you do it wrong, you're gonna either stall or you're gonna go too close to the car in front of you, or you're gonna have a quite a horrible time. In this kind of traffic, you're gonna be moving and stopping a lot, which forces you to actually know how it works properly. So like here, for instance, the traffic is starting to move yeah, it forces me to learn how to do it properly. If I was, if I was doing it wrong, I'd go too fast towards this car or I'd stall and there, therefore 
it will actually teach you how to do it properly. You then have time to think about what you've just done and what you're gonna do next or what you've done wrong because it's stopping and then starting again, stopping and then starting again. That way you get used to how the clutch works. The only issue with this kind of traffic is, especially if you're new, your foot is gonna to start to hurt after a while. And if it does, just put your handbrake on and go into neutral, shake your foot and then bring it back down to the correct position because it slowly climbs up. And then before the traffic starts moving again, clutch down, get into first, handbrake down and then carry on moving slowly using the clutch control. Another important aspect of mastering clutch control is hill starts and the best way to do that or the best way to master this kind of clutch control is to go somewhere quiet that's a bit hilly uh, on a side road somewhere and practice catching the, the car if he rolls back so if he rolls back a bit practice bringing it to the right point and catching it there so it doesn't roll, it doesn't roll back anymore. Don't let it roll back too far practice just letting it roll back a tiny bit and then catching it that way when you practice loads let's say now you're in traffic and you're on a hill and then you feel the car rolling back a bit you've trained your leg or your foot to come to the right point without the car going too far back and without it going shooting forward because if you bring the clutch up too high when it rolls back like this you're going to stall if you bring it up too low it's going to keep rolling back so just practice bringing your foot up to the biting point quickly like there and then holding it still that way when you are on the roads it's super easy to just catch it and then drive on again Somebody asked, is it okay to go into first gear while the car is still moving? And the answer is, not only is it okay, but it actually makes your driving smoother in some situations. You'd want to go into first before the car stops, and I'll show you what I mean. For instance, if I was to go into a sharp turn like this one here, I'm going to check my mirrors and signal left, and there's a car there as well. So I want to go in there extra slowly. So instead of stopping and going into first, I can keep moving and going to first while the car is still moving, and then bring the clutch up smoothly. That way, I can make the turn slowly in first gear without having to come to a stop first. It's also useful for when you're pulling over in a tight space. So let's say I want to pull over somewhere in between some parked cars, like here for instance. If I was to do this in second, it might not work so well, but I'll go into first with the car still moving, and then I can turn in sharply and then use my clutch control now because I'm in first gear. And then that way, I can have more control and if I need to reverse back I can reverse back but in second gear that wouldn't work that well but also stopping and then changing into first might not be a good idea because there could be someone behind me trying to go past me and they're not expecting me to just suddenly stop as I'm making my turn towards the left so that's another example why going into first while the car is still moving is useful so I'm going to be turning left at the end here and normally if it was clear and I could see I could just leave it I could just leave it in second and go in keep moving but because I can't see properly I'm going to go into first while the car's still rolling that way I can keep moving without coming to a full stop keep the traffic flowing and it's much smoother that way I'm going to turn right into this side road here so instead of stopping in second I can go into first while these guys are going past and then carry on going in first gear if I was to do that in second I'd have to stop first change into first and then move but because those motorbikes are going past at the right time I can just go into first gear so I can go really slowly and keep moving and then make my turn much smoother and much more fuel efficient.